Unlike row and column, which are used to align their children vertically and horizontally, stack is used to place widgets on top of each other, that is along the z-axis. So like row and column, here we also have a children property and with which we can give multiple children to the stack. So right now we have two containers, one with a red color and a 200 width and height and another with a width and height of 100 and a color blue arranged in a column with main axis alignment of center. So what I will do is I will just remove the main axis alignment and change the column to stack. So as soon as I save the app, you can see that the stack positions the widgets on top of each other. And the second child, that is the container with 100 of width and 100 of height and a color blue, is placed above the child that is having a 200 of width and height and a color of red. So basically, higher the position of child in the list of children, the closer it will be to the user. So the stack behaves a bit oddly in terms of width and height. By default, the width and height of the stack is decided according to the requirements of its children. So in this case, the maximum space taken by the stack is of 200 by 200 because this is the maximum width and height that is given to any of its child. But this behavior changes if we wrap the stack with another widget that is having its own width and height. So let's say I wrap the stack with a container and I give the container a width of 400, a height of 700 and a color of gray. And as soon as I save the app, you can see that the contents of the stack moves to the top left corner of the container. And this is because the stack has now taken the width and height of the sized container. So basically the width and height of stack depends on two cases. If the stack is wrapped with a widget, which is not given a width and height explicitly, like the center earlier, then the stack will take the maximum width and height that is required by its children. And in the case in which the stack is wrapped by a widget, that is given an explicit width and height, then the stack will take the width and height of the widget it's wrapped with, which in this case is the container, which is given a width of 400 and a height of 700. So in this case, all the children are aligned to the top left corner of the stack. So to change the alignment of children, I can simply use the alignment property of stack. And if I change its value to alignment dot top right and save the app, you can see that all the children are now aligned to the top right corner of the stack. And if I change it to bottom center and save the app, all the children move to the bottom center of the stack. So there are two other properties of stack which we have to look into. But before that, we have to take a look at another widget, which is most often used with stack to position widgets in a much more custom way. And this widget is called the positioned widget. So to use it, we simply need to wrap the child with a position widget. And in this case, what I will do is I will change the alignment to top right. And I save the app. And what I basically need to do is I need to move this container, that is this blue container, to the bottom right corner. And for that, what I can simply do is I can wrap the container with the positioned widget and I'll simply give some properties to this positioned widget. And in this case, I want the view to be at the bottom. And I'll give the bottom a value of zero. And I'll give the same value to the right. So the reason for giving the value of zero to the bottom and zero to the right is that I want the view to have zero distance from the bottom and zero distance from the right. So other than the bottom and right, there are four more properties. So this top, height and bottom deal with the vertical axis and this left, width and right deal with the horizontal axis. And out of these three vertical properties, that is the top, height and bottom, you can only give value to two at a time. And in the same way, out of these three properties that deal with the horizontal axis, you can only give a value to two at a time. And in this case, I wanted to position the widget in the bottom right corner. So what I simply did, I gave the bottom value a zero and I gave the right a value of zero. And so the widget that is this container with a width and height of 100 is positioned to the bottom right corner of the stack. And the width and height property of positioned widget overrides the width and height that is given to its children. So in this case, if I give the position a width of 200 and I save the app, you can see that the container is now taking the width of 200 instead of its actual width of 100. So basically, if I also give a height to the positioned widget, and change it to 300, let's say, and save the app, the container's height will now be overridden by the height that is given to the positioned. So positioned is really a simple widget and it helps in positioning elements in stack. So let's come back to the stack now and let's take a look at another property that is called fit.
and the fit can be given three types of values, one of which is stackfit.lose. So basically, what stackfit.lose does, it lets all the children of stack have their own width and height, restricting their values to the maximum width and height of the stack, which in this case is 400 by 700. So any of the child of this stack cannot have a width that is more than 400 and a height cannot be more than 700. So other than this stackfit.lose, fit can also be changed to stackfit.expand. And if I save the app, you can see that the stack is now filled with this container that is red in color. And this stackfit.expand forces each of the non-positioned children of stack to take the maximum width and height that is allowed by the stack, which in this case is 400 by 700. You must keep in mind that this only happens with the non-positioned widgets. So in this case, I do have this container which is 100 by 100 in width and height, and it is positioned to bottom right corner. And the stackfit.expand does not have an effect on this positioned widget. And in the case, if I remove the positioned and if I save the app again, you can see that the container that is 100 by 100 in width and height is now affected by this stackfit.expand. So let's say I change the bottom position of this container to minus 20. And if I save the app, you can see that as the container moves down, the remaining portion of the container is now clipped. That means any part of container that exceeds the bounds of the stack is now clipped from the stack. So we can change this behavior using the overflow property. So if I give the overflow a value of visible, and if I save the app, you can now see that the blue container, which is positioned at a bottom of minus 20, exceeds the bounds of the stack, but is still visible outside the bounds of the stack. So using the overflow property, we can decide what we want to do with the widgets that overflow the bounds given to them by the stack. So if I change the overflow to clip and save the app, the remaining portion of the container is now clipped again. So by default, the overflow property of the stack is set to overflow.clip. So these are all the important properties of stack and positioned which might come in handy in Flutter UI design. So if you find this video useful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more in-depth Flutter widget essential videos coming your way. See you next time. Peace.